we will move straight to the next presenter, Dr. Ibrahim Umar Elias, uh, who has been blessed to come from a family of the renowned scholar, Sheikh Umar Elias, uh, Alhamdulillah. He is an associate professor of the Department of Arabic and Islamic Studies of the University of Maiduguri. Learned a lot of his Islam from his father, of course, uh, and many other scholars. Uh, graduate of the Al Kanemi College of Islamic Theology in Maiduguri, then University of Maiduguri with a master's, a PhD in Arabic studies, is editor in chief of the Hidayah Journal and has published uh, numerous <clears throat> academic uh, publications in both national and international journals, over 30 papers published so far. Um, I don't have any jokes against Meiduguri other than I've spent the last probably 12 years um, studying Boko Haram, its ideology, but also having to look at the devastation um, that it has caused. And you honestly appreciate the resilience of the kind of people of Maiduguri. Allah has given them the ability to go through Wahala and Sira, you know, as they say in Hausa, to go through it. Uh, you go to Meiduguri, you wouldn't believe that kind of trauma happened there. May Allah continue to bless, guide, protect them, and protect all of us. Uh, Dr. Ibrahim Umar Elias, please, the floor is yours. Zakallahu Hairan, 25 minutes. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. <laughs> اللهم ثبت جناني وأجر الحق على لساني وأعوذ بك من أن أظلم أو أظلم وأعوذ بك من أن أغتال من تحتي إنما الأعمال بالنيات وإنما لكل امرئ ما نوى فمن كانت هجرته إلى الله ورسوله فهجرته إلى الله ورسوله ومن كانت هجرته لدنيا يصيبها أو امرأة ينتوها فهجرته إلى ما هاجر إليه Uh, the moderator and the co-presenter, distinguished guest, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. I had my professor, and in academia, whenever professor talks, he's an authority. I'm a young in this field. So I cannot talk as professor, but a young researcher. Although the field is not mine, but I tried to jump in because I have a keen interest in it. That's why I walked towards to present these papers. But I don't know, maybe I will just read some of it. So I prefer to read some of these papers, but not all, so that we can, we can get something from what professors say and what I'm gonna say. It is obvious that when an enemy of people wants to direct his evil plots at a specific entity from among them, he chooses the weakest or the most sensitive points of the entity over the years, there has been general outcry from the Muslim Ummah from across the world on the way the West has always been emphasizing the issue of Muslim women. With an ulterior motive of waging an intellectual war against Islam. With reference to this prevailing issue, so many rejoiders have been put up by different authors explaining that women have achieved in different fields of human endeavor and accusing Islam of depriving women a desire freedom. 
this accusation has to be checkmated with impeccable facts. Uh, the truth of matter, Islam defend virtue of women all the cost, for they are treated as a diamond, carefully taken care of for fear of getting lost or stolen. Restricting Muslim women is done for Islamic unprecedented love for her and made a beautiful modality or chain to adorn with because such restriction does not prevent her from mingling with men in place of worship during pilgrimage and legitimate activities. So my paper is going to discuss three fundamental issues. The first one, women and their position in Islam. The second one, Islamic law point of view on land. And the third one, Islamic position on women person's ability to assume executive leadership. In brief, the term woman is used to define a female identity regardless of her age. Islam has given her a great attention and looked upon her with honor and pride. A woman is regarded as mother, stepmother, aunt, grandmother, daughter, sister, wife, who always serve as man partner in bearing the responsibility of life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tasks women along with man to take the responsibility of raising children according to Islamic conjunctions. So Islam raises the status of women and considers them reasonable human beings with utmost right and freedom from all shackles of restrictions that were superimposed upon them in the past. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, wal mu'minuna wal mu'minat ba'duhum awliya'u ba'din ya'amuruna bil ma'rufi wa yinhawna anil munkar وَيُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةَ وَيُؤْتُونَ الزَّكَاةَ وَيُطِعُونَ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ أُولَيْكَ سَيَرْحَمُهُمُ اللَّهُ إِنَّ اللَّهَ عَزِيزُ الْحَكِيمُ Means the believers, the believing men and the believing women are allies of one another. They enjoy what is right and forbid what is wrong and establish prayer and give zakat and obey Allah and his messenger. Thus, Allah will have mercy upon them. Indeed, Allah is exalted in might and wisdom. This will explain the position and the value, freedom of a man in Islam. And Islam has given her a complete freedom that suits her. You will find her participating with men in collective acts of worship, as we say. So it is crystal clear that Islam does not differentiate between, between men and women in worship. Let's alone in other things. As an Islamic law point, view women's freedom. In the past, it was common to imprison women, isolate them from life, and leave them in the house as if they were a piece of furniture. When Islam came into existence, it liberated women. So Islam is fear in all that is legislated and calls, and calls for, in terms of ruling and etiquette. We also find more on Islamic moral conducts towards women, as postulated by Qaradawi. These include preserving her nature and femininity that God created her with and God created her with and got her from predators, uh, predators. Respecting her lovely, lofty position, respecting her lofty position, which was created by her inner nature, choosing for her by the creator, who stand for out, who stand her out with a greater share does of men in terms of tenderness and affections. Authorizing her to walk outside home 
in that the work suit her nature and ability and provided that her family or the community is in need of such work. In Quran, you can see socially that no report shows that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honored one person over another ex except with pity and ratios. Allah said, Ya huwa nazi na khalaqnaakum min dhikari wa unsa wa ja'alnaakum shu'uban wa qabaila li ta'arufu inna akramakum inda Allahi atqaakum. So men and women are going to sin. It has also been repeated in hadith by Ahmad and Nasai that uh, an nisa shaqaiqu rijal. Women are twin halves of men. That means they are the same as men, except for what the league, uh, for, except for what the legislator excludes, such as inheritance, testimony, and other things that mentioned in the noble Quran and Hadith. So the concern of Islam towards women has reached the extent that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala listened to a woman from among Muslim women who was neither the wife of the prophet, peace be upon to him, nor the senior companion. She was Khawlat bint Salaba when she argued the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on uh, the problem between her and her husband. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals ayakas sami allahu qawla lati tujjadil kafi zawjiha. So woman has all the capability to work in the field that she can be able to. With this, we met to know the importance of women in Islam's society, where we see equality between men and women in rights and duties, and it is permissible for them to work in all fields in which men do, except for that uh, contrary to sanctity, chastity, and their physiological formation that Islamic religion has put an end to all bottlenecks that robs women of their right in our societies. Let me go just direct to the main point of this issue. Does Islam, Islamic position on women permissibility to assume executive duties or executive leadership? Professor has talked on this and he talks about all what usul fiqhis and others talk. So I will just go on this contemporary ulamas, what they say on this. History has recorded immortal pages written with a gleamed pen for a significant number of achievements of Muslim women scholars who have reached a high degree in education jurisprudence and knowledge in all other science to extend that most prominent scholars narrated many sciences from them. In the biography of uh, Muslim bin Ibrahim Abi Amr al Asdil Farahidi, a teacher of Imam Bukhari and Abi Dawood who died 222 after Hijra, said he narrated hadith on the authority of 70 women. More so, among those who narrated a lot on the authority of women are Sheikh Al Islam Aliwa ibn Taymiyyah, Al Hafiz Abu Al Hajjaj Al Mazzi, Al Imam Al Zahabi, Al Hafiz Ibn Hajar Al Asqalani, Al Hafiz Najm Al Din Ibn Fahad, Al Hafiz Shams Al Din Al Sakhawi, and Al Hafiz Jalal Al Din Al Siyuki. As for preoccupation with contemporary politics, women can join political parties if the goal is to set programs and plans that will benefit people and make observation or critique a ruler and those in charge of matters, in charge of matters. This of course is also an act of enjoying good deed and forbidding evil and, Allah, and forbidding evil that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded both men and women to propagate. But Islamic scholars hold different views 
on this assumption of women into senior and key position of leadership in Islamic society, as Prof. Stokes. And the most prominent jurisprudential terms on this issue are divided into three. The trend of prohibiting women from holding all positions. The legality of women holding some position with some restrictions. And the third one, the eligibility of women to hold all positions of power. And the paper categorically allies with the trend that advocate the permissibility of women to assume position of power, emphasizing that women have the right to occupy position in Islamic state because men and women are the same in terms of performing all Islamic duties bestowed upon them by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In his one of his fatwas, Sheikh Shari Ibrahim Sal Husseini, the Mufti of the Supreme Council of Islamic Affairs of Nigeria says, Ulama who disapprove of the services of women in public offices argue that Islam does not permit a woman to hold any executive position or occupy any office based on the Almighty's Allah saying in the glorious Quran, Ar-Rijal Qawamuna Al-Nisa. Men are the protectors and maintainers of women. They also support their argument that the hadith reported by Bukhari, Tirmizi, which authority by, uh, taught by Abu Bakrata, who said that when the news of the death of Kisra, king of Parisa, reached the messenger, he asked about the successor of the king. He was informed that the king's daughter succeeded her father. Then probably, uh, the Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Len wallaw amrahum imra. This one is different from the executive power we are talking about. People who are ruled by women shall never succeed. So the verse quoted above from Surah Nisa refers to the protection and maintenance that husbands give to their wives when the verse is read further than the portion quoted, uh, quoted it will bring out the meaning more clearly. This is why the verse says, الرجال قوامون على النساء بماذا بما فضل الله بعضهم على بعض وبما أنفقوا من أموالهم Men are the protectors and maintainers of women because Allah has made one of them to exceed the other and because they spend to feed and support women from their means This clearly shows that Family leadership is referred to here where men give protection, feeding, and general support to their wives and other female members of the family. Therefore, the verse does not refer to public leadership. Mufti of uh, Master, the Grand Mufti of Master Dr. Shoki Alam said, women may take over the judiciary and senior position in the nation. And he said, a woman is like a man in all legal duties. Every act of worship mentioned in the Quran or Sunnah is absolutely general. That is, it involves both male and female. And one of them is not specified except with evidence on the basis, many Quranic verses and prophetic hadiths address both male and females with the following believers or people, those who believe. So no any different. Even though the wording are just considered as reminders, the female are not exempted from them as pointed out by scholars. Also, it is important to note that Whatever applies to a man applies to a woman as well, be it a judicial mandate. Although it is expressed in the contemporary period that it is one of the rights of individuals, this right is surrounded by mandate, meaning certain mandate must be exist in a society for the society to advance and to achieve justice and equity. Yusuf al Qaradawi affirmed that women have the right to be president of a nation and parliament membership, in addition to the right to vote 
stressing that Islamic logic is this Islamic logic in this issue is based on the fact that a woman is a feel or is a fully qualified human being. And the Islamic position is always moderate. Allah says, فَاسْتَجَابَ لَهُمْ رَبُّهُمْ إِنِّي لَا أُضِيُّ عَمَلَ عَامِلٍ مِنْكُمْ مِنْ ذَكَرٍ أَوْ أُنْسَى بَعْضُكُمْ مِنْ بَعْضٍ And their Lord responded to them, Never will I allow the work of any worker among you to be lost, whether male or female. You are of one another. This is simply indicating that men are from women and women also from men. Each complements the uh, each complements the other. With this, coupled with the property hadith, which was previously quoted to have said, women are the twin halves of men. We can say that a woman can do any work that suits her under the following conditions. First, the work should be legitimate, as it is not permissible for her to do any illegal job just as it's not permissible for a man. Two, the work should not be inconsistent with her main function. Three, it must also adhere to Islamic etiquette regarding dressing, working, speaking, among others. On this note, fundamentalists will say, typical of everything is permissible until evidence for its prohibition is provided. As Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, مَا أَحَلَّ اللَّهِ فَهُوَ حَرَامُ وَمَا حَرَّمَ فَهُوَ حَرَامُ وَمَا سَكَتَ عَنْهُ فَهُوَ عَفُو فَاقْبَلُوا مِنَ اللَّهِ عَافِيَتَهُ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَمْ يَكُنْ لِيَنْسَى شَيْئًا Whatever Allah has permitted is permitted. And what he has forbidden is forbidden. And what he has remained silent about is a pardon. So accept from Allah his pardon because Allah will not forget anything. A former minister of endowment and Islamic affairs of uh, Kingdom of Morocco, Sheikh, uh, Sheikh or Dr. Abdul Karim Al Madgari, made an extensive comment on this issue in his book titled a woman between the injunctions of jurisprudence and agitation for change. He said, there is no objection in Islam, as we have stated earlier, for a lady to hold all kinds of public offices and other duties except the great imama. Except the great imama. Therefore, Islam recognizes the competence of women. Lastly, based on all the silent issues and reasons adduced in this, it is abundantly clear that women have the Islamic legal right to hold any office. In conclusion, to every scholarly argument or claim, there have always been two or more views, or more views. This paper presents a scholarly position on women in executive leadership, a perspective from Islamic jurisprudence. It traverses through three key issues, women and their position in Islam, Islamic law point of view on women freedom, and concludes by pinpointing reason, revealing Islamic position on women permissibility to assume executive duties. And I will say, I'm sorry for not giving the right of this paper. As I told you that I'm a researcher and I have interest in this topic. That's why I go to. Thank you for listening to me. And I'm sorry for sitting down because I have a problem. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuhu. Alhamdulillah, Jazakallah Hiran Sheikh for that wonderful intervention. Um, 
And I think what he did was, uh, Professor Zonu Rain gave us four opinions. And what he did was to focus on one of them, which was the opinion that a woman could be a head of state, she could be a governor, she could be any position other than what is described as the supreme leader or caliph of the ummah. And that's opinion that uh, uh, he mentioned a number of scholars have held. Uh, and that this is by its nature a contemporary issue when we look at the kind of political system. And I would encourage uh, if you could do a search online for the fatwa of Sheikh Sharif Saleh on women in leadership. So for those who want to read something in, uh, in detail, he referred to that uh, fatwa that is easily available in English online. The Arabic version is also there. Jazakallah 